Whether you're a new pilot or an experienced pilot, one of the key purchases every pilot makes at some point is to purchase their own aviation headset. We are in a new age of aviation where technologies like active noise reduction, Bluetooth and smartphones are making flying safer, easier and more enjoyable. To help you make that choice, Sport Pilot TV took the most popular headsets on the market for a test fly. Here are the headsets we reviewed in part one of our headset challenge. The Pilotcom PNR 4000, which is a basic passive headset that retails for 129 Australian dollars. The Pilotcom ANR 5000, which is an entry level active noise reduction headset, which retails for $329. The Lightspeed Zulu 2, active noise reduction GA edition, which retails for $895. The Sennheiser S1 Passive, which is a premium passive headset and it retails for $569. The S1 Digital by Sennheiser is their new active noise reduction design, which retails for $1,399. The EQ1 Link Pack is a wireless headset and transceiver which plugs into your existing aircraft jacks. Both have built-in rechargeable batteries. This kit retails for around $1,090. The Bose A20 GA Twin with Bluetooth, which sells at $1,275. So first up, let's take a look at the features of each headset. The Pilot Communications Passive Headset is a very similar construction to the ANR 5000. It just doesn't have the active noise reduction box on the cable. It's a purely passive device. It also comes with the fabric ear covers, if you like them, and a soft carry case. The ANR 5000 by Pilot Communications is our entry level headset. It's a bit more of a traditional style headset. It's got some basic adjustments here. It comes with these covers for the ear cups and uh, has left and right volume controls. The uh, microphone boom is quite flexible and of course it's got an ANR unit with a bell clip on it. Uh, the switch here is for mono and stereo. Basically once you plug it in it will detect that it's connected and the ANR will kick in. Uh, obviously it's not as strong as some of the other headsets in the ANR but it's a, it's a great entry level product. I did notice one thing is that you need to make sure that you're using stereo mode in order to use this audio input jack and you'll end up with the music coming in one ear and your communications for the intercom coming into the other ear. It has a basic glide for a basic headset and comes with a standard carry case. The Lightspeed Zulu 2 is an adjustable headset similar to the other headsets. It has replaceable pads and a flexible mic boom. Uh, it's an ANR headset, so uh, it is battery powered and has uh, active noise reduction. Split volume controls here, a Bluetooth button for controlling uh, Bluetooth devices, Bluetooth volume up and down, as well as uh, an intercom mode button for your phone calls being attenuated during uh, a intercom conversation or actually just being mixed in. Uh, you can play music via Bluetooth as well as make phone calls via Bluetooth or alternatively you can use the auxiliary socket and an appropriate cable to connect your uh, music in. Uh, it comes with a comprehensive user guide and of course a quite a sturdy hard cased carry bag. One of the things that's unique to the Zulu 2 or the Lightspeed series is the new application called Flightlink. You simply plug an audio cable between the module and your iPhone and the flight link application will allow you to record your cockpit conversations and play back uh, the last two seconds, the last two minutes even, uh, whilst you're in the aircraft. The Sennheiser S1 Passive has the same physical construction as the S1 Digital, however of course it's not ANR. You can see the same adjustability, changeable uh, ear pads here and of course the control looks similar except it's minus Bluetooth. It still has the individual dual volume controls, uh, a power switch, a muting switch and a stereo or mono selection. The other difference with the S1 Passive is that it is a direct connection for using MP3 audio which is this socket here like the other devices. It does not uh, do uh, 
music via Bluetooth and of course therefore it doesn't have your skip buttons and the other uh, advanced features of the S1 Digital. Uh, another thing to note on the S1 Passive is it does have a uh, microphone adjustment here which uh, lets you set the volume of the microphone adjustment. Of course it comes with a far more brief manual because that's all you require and uh, a carry case. Sennheiser S1 Digital are a very adjustable headset. They have a contact pressure adjustment on the inside here. They adjust up and down. Uh, they also have this smart button for your A&R so that it can be adjusted when the cabin noise is changed. The most interesting thing about the uh, Sennheiser is their Bluetooth system. You don't need to have a MP3 jack to uh, play your music. All you need to do is link it up by Bluetooth and you can play straight away. You can also move forwards on tracks, skip backwards on tracks, etc. etc. So very handy to have that rather than having to fumble around for your iPhone. Uh, they do include, of course, a great guide and this sheet which has been beautifully made up so that it can slip inside your aircraft. And of course, a carry bag. The EQ1 wireless headset is quite unique in that it is wireless. Uh, it comes with this EQ link which plugs straight into your GA headset. The EQ link itself is battery powered, uh, has a USB socket here and also a socket for MP3 audio input. Um, comes with a comprehensive menu and a carry bag and all the charging uh, requirements for DC and AC. The uh, headset itself has a USB socket for charging as well. Um, battery hours is typically uh, 23 hours of life, um, more than enough for a good long flight. The uh, headset is an A&R headset. It's quite unique in that when you adjust Three, your four, volumes five, or your, your other settings and configuration, it's all done via a uh, voice operated menu system and this knob here. The Bose A20 comes with a comprehensive owner's guide, a quick start sheet and a handy carry case. The headset itself is adjustable and has removable cushioning. The microphone is a flexi type adjustable boom and the microphone and cord can be swapped from one side to the other. The controls for the Bose are quite simple. They're left and right audio, uh, power on button with an auto power off feature. There is a Bluetooth button here and three modes for your intercom, which is intercom prioritized, intercom mixed, and intercom only. There is also an MP3 socket down the side to be able to plug in to your phone and listen to music. The uh, Bluetooth phone calls volumes can be adjusted with the volume controls left and right here. And there's some basic features in terms of uh, ignoring a call or double press to call the last number dialed. To continue our testing, Chris, Martin, Ian and I took the headsets into several different aircraft and put them through the paces, checking for clarity of the microphone and the speakers via the intercom and also over radio communication. We also evaluated the ability to cancel noise, their comfort, usability and of course all the individual features of each headset. Okay, so this is uh, Andrew on the uh, Pilot Communication ANR 5000 and we've got uh, Chris on the uh, EQ1 wireless. Hey Andrew. 50, downwind uh, runway uh, 35. Parting south to the uh, training and ref through 3500 uh, now on climb uh, 4000 uh, and track 170 Bathurst. Chris, that transmission is uh, very, very clear indeed. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Double seven five zero two uh, eight zero eight nine. Uh, this is uh, Andrew. You might give me a radio check. Yeah, we're reading you fine. If we end up uh, inadvertently too close. Sure, it won't happen, but we'll break right. So far, just over here, chimney dam wall, and my coach in the dam wall now. Like a scene from Dam Busters. Damn. 
uh, still haven't got your side is there. After Dan Wall, we're right over the middle of the water and um, we've climbed a bit but we're getting back down to 4,000. Oh, there he is. So Ian, how are the uh, thin eyes, the digital going? Uh, yeah, they're not too bad. There's a little bit of, uh, little bit of noise, but uh, I think that's the uh, steel on the uh, on glasses here. And I was looking to you live from the Steinhauser standard headset, but uh, once you've had A&R, you feel a bit spoiled, like you hear a very low, constant rumbling in the background. However, the quality of the sound is pretty good. Lastly, we performed some back-to-back -back double blind testing. To do this, we used a PA400 portable intercom. Okay, so, Chris, can you uh, give us a, a wrap first on uh, comfort? Yeah, these, uh, these are pretty good. Um, they're relatively uh, light, uh, not clamping on the, uh, the old noggin too, uh, too much, and um, I'm giving these uh, an 8 on comfort. Okay. How do you copy? Yeah, Chris's volume is a little high, but I can tell that that's a very, very clear microphone, and that's, um, I have no trouble understanding them. It doesn't seem to be distorted at all. And um, Martin? Yeah. Comfort? Um, there's a f these are a little heavier than previous sets, and there's a, there's a fair clamping pressure on my head. Uh, as with the last set, I suspect that after a couple of hours in the cockpit, or particularly if I had glasses on that I, uh, with the... Uh, side bit with this extra pressure I think they would become uncomfortable. So we swapped around headsets and we worked our way through each headset individually evaluating it in our own opinion. First up uh, comfort, um, how do they feel? Strong clamping pressure, these the, again these would be good for a few hours. Along the way, we uh, surprised ourselves with a few differences between each headset. Does that, uh, that improve the situation from your side? No, it's made no difference. I, I still get a very good studio sound from Andrew. And although yours is very clear and it's probably uh, it's picking up every sound, it just hasn't got that the tone to it. It just sounds a little tinny. Mm. All right. Well, um, at this point, I reckon uh, you guys should turn around. Let's see what all three of us are wearing. What? Well, kiss the other wow. contestant. Okay. Oh, he's pretty. Oh, he's going that way. Because yeah. <coughs> that's outstanding. That's what's hilarious. Yeah. So and that one is a little tinny. I'm using. Yeah. The, on. I'm using the Pilot Com passives. Okay, I got the digital. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the uh, studio quality mic. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Whereas yeah. that is tinny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's got a really good sponge uh, on it. Can you, well, can you hear what I'm talking about with his? It's a little metallic. Um, I can hear it a teeny bit. I can hear the distortion when you got too close. Have, yeah. a, have a listen with these. Because I've got to say, I didn't expect that from a Bose. Mm. Oh, these are Bose? Yep. You're wearing the Bose A20s. Wow. So, yes, um, um, I, like I can hear what you're talking about in yours yeah. when you first put that on. There's something about the uh, dynamic range of the microphone. Yeah, it's fantastic. Different. It's sort of... It's better than that microphone, I've got to yeah. say, uh, in this situation. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's funny, but when we were up in the aircraft, they yeah. got rated as getting a very good uh, Well, when signal. we tested these in the Tiger Moth, this was completely unsuitable for yeah. a high-noise aeroplane, yeah. whereas those were perfect. Uh, Interesting. Uh, mm, well, how about that for blind test? Yeah. There we go. All the while, I uh, kept on adding up all the scores and to our tally sheet. We then repeated the testing with some real engine noise by starting up Ian's Vector Harmony. How's that sound? It's funny, you know, because I could hear that uh, cardboard being swept across the ground very clearly, but it's cut out 90% of that engine noise. So the noise reduction's interesting on this. Um, and the quality of the speakers from your voice is, as Chris mentioned before, and I've said that it's a very good studio quality um, uh, speaker. But Chris's voice through his microphone, it's clearly he's got a, a cheaper microphone. Yeah, noise reduction uh, for me with that uh, aeroplane uh, taxing uh, there was uh, very good as well. Um, I'm, I'm upping the, uh, the noise reduction uh, rating to, uh, to 8 now. Right, okay. Yep, yep. 
Actually, I've mm. got one more pair I want you to try oh, out. Oh, okay. If you can turn around. Yep. Um, hold on a sec. You might as well keep those on, Chris. You might as well um, both turn around. What have I got on? I reckon they suit him perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty boy. <laughs> I want these. You want, mine. you want them? Yeah, he's cool. There's the pretty boy then. So after two days of testing, we tallied up our individual scores, debated a little bit, and then met at the Sport Pilot TV desk to give you our final conclusions. And here they are. Okay, well, welcome to the Sport Pilot TV review panel. Uh, we've, for this review, we've reviewed the EQ1 headset, the Sennheiser S1 Digital, the Sennheiser S1 Passive, uh, the Bose A20, and the Pilot Communications ANR5000, which is an active headset, as well as their Passive variant. Uh, and also the Lightspeed Zulus and the Sierras we threw in at the last minute. Now, we didn't get a response back from David Clark, so we apologise we haven't managed to uh, incorporate David Clark in the testing, but perhaps we can uh, try them out a little bit later on. So we've tested the headsets in flight uh, and on a common intercom system. The key criteria that we were testing for is for comfort, for noise reduction and uh, communications clarity. Uh, the aircraft that we tried them out in were a Jabiru, J170, the Vector Harmony, and the uh, Tiger Moth, which was an interesting uh, <laughs> aircraft to throw in the mix. So uh, ultimately, the results have come back um, from the pool of everybody's opinions. Uh, and well, perhaps we should start uh, down the middle. The EQ1 wireless headset, uh, we did try out, and the, the key feature of the EQ1 is that it is entirely wireless. So you have an EQ1 link uh, that you plug into your communication system and then you can, you're free to move about the cabin depending on how large, how large your cabin is. Uh, we ranked the EQ1 at a six uh, for comfort. Comfort we found it was a bit, I think you particularly Chris found that the compression mm. on your head was, uh, was a bit too I much. I found them pretty heavy and a bit, uh, bit compressed, yeah, tight. Uh, yep. Uh, noise reduction uh, was pretty good in, in, the, in the digital category. I think it ranked about a, a, a seven, um, but we found that there was this side tone. Once again, I think it was you, Chris, mm -hmm. heard this, this, this side tone, this little background hum. A bit of a more described as a beep, I, I think, and uh, I think it's something the other two of you picked up uh, later on as well. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't the, the beep that, uh, that the link was lost, it's just a little background uh, hum. Mm. So we, 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 perhaps we need to, to retry them out again. Um, comms and clarity was pretty good. Uh, when we were um, uh, out there in the aircraft, um, I was using the EQ1s and uh, I was told a few times that the, the clarity of it was, was, was pretty good. So that really ranked in about a seven on the, uh, the speaker and the microphone if you average them out. Uh, if we climb back up the ladder a little bit, um, we had the S1 Digitals. So the S1 Digital uh, by Sennheiser uh, ranked a seven on the comfort scale and the uh, noise reduction came in at uh, seven as well. Uh, for the noise reduction, we tried the ambient uh, noise and also we, we had some real engine noise to, uh, to test against um, and obviously we did the headset swap, so that was pretty good. Uh, in terms of communications clarity, it actually gets back up more like an 8. Um, in fact, uh, Chris, you once listed the, the speakers as the, the best you'd heard mm -hmm. uh, when, it, when it came to... Um, to you know, the clarity that was coming into you. And the microphone itself came, came up as an eight for us listening to, to that headset. So pretty good. So uh, as we move up the scale, before we go down the scale, that leaves only two contenders left. Okay, so to, uh, to sum up, uh, Chris, can you give us the rankings? Okay, well, I'm going to look after the, uh, the bottom four, starting with uh, the, uh, the not so long last uh, pilot uh, com uh, passives. Now, these are worth a mention because they're only 99 bucks, great entry level uh, headset. Uh, they work well in a school environment. We've, we've tried them out here at uh, Bathurst uh, and uh, they, they do work uh, well. They're not bad value if you don't need uh, noise reduction. Next in line is the uh, Sennheiser Passives. They're not too bad uh, either, relatively uh, cheap uh, headset. 
and uh, we, we ranked them uh, not too far behind the, uh, the headset uh, above them, which was the Pilot Com ANR. Now these ones are interesting. They're made in uh, China uh, headset. Uh, they come in at about 329 uh, retail, and uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, with them uh, at, at all. I mean, they're not the, the full meal deal in terms of active noise uh, reduction, but they're good enough for a school environment where you want the students to have the uh, the added uh, benefit of A and R. Quite impressed with uh, with those. And back up to, uh, to number four in the overall uh, rankings, the EQ1 wireless. Now you've heard in our commentary uh, the pros and cons that we saw in relation to that headset in terms of uh, flexibility, getting in and out of aircraft, talking to solo, first solo students. Um, they've got some, some advantages. Relatively expensive, let down a bit by their overall uh, performance, which is why they're number four. Andrew. So actually, Martin, uh, would you like to give us the, the summary for the, the top three, the absolute winners? Well, we're moving into the range now where money is no object or you're spending a lot of time in the cockpit, so you really want to protect your hearing. Um, I'll start with the third ranked of the top three, and that's the Sennheiser Digitals. They're a very good headset. They're a quality, obviously quality fittings, microphone and speaker, and they're well worth investing in. Coming in number two was the Lightspeed Zulus. These are another very high quality headset. Uh, I think they're around $900, and we did test throughout the proceedings the Lightspeed Sierras. They're considerably cheaper, about $300 cheaper, and they're also well worth a look at. But undisputed, unanimous decision is the Bose A20s. These are a top of the range headset that are in a class all of their own, and I think we're all in complete agreement when we say these are the clear winners. Comfort, clarity, everything uh, just to you just have to look at them to know that uh, well your money's going somewhere even yeah. though uh, it's it's a lot of money it, it's certainly worth it no question terrific well uh, stay tuned on our website for part two of the uh, the lab testing uh, in part two we're going to take the headsets off to a lab where they've got anatomic chamber and we'll test the actual objective sound qualities of each headset and see how they perform against uh, some noise in a completely enclosed lab environment. So uh, also check out our website for some special uh, pricing that we have on a few of the headsets that we've uh, reviewed today. And uh, we'll see you next time in the uh, review panel for Sport Pilot TV. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew.